Here's an idea. Adventure Time is popular because of nostalgia. Adventure Time, come on and grab your friends, is a kids television show on the Cartoon Network. It stars Jake the dog and Finn the human and was created by bearded human Pendleton Ward, pictured here wearing some awesome glasses. It's set in the magical land of Ooh and its many kingdoms, which are home to candy people, animals, and a whole cast of generally weird but also adorable characters. My personal favorite is the snow golem. As one might suspect, the general thrust of Adventure Time is adventures. Finn and Jake are best buds who go on all manner of moral, ethical, and and totally mathematical Math escapades. Finn, you're terrible at math. They rescue princesses, fight giant monsters, protect the innocent, and have a strong dislike of evil dudes. And they are very popular. Amongst not only kids, but also a huge contingent of honest to glob, growed up adults. Now, if you're a kid, Adventure Time probably looks a lot like the inside of your head. Exciting sights, magical objects, and impossibly terrifying things. But if you're an adult, Adventure Time is like remembering your childhood. Fighting to be taken seriously, constant encounters with new and unfamiliar challenges, grappling with a deer that has hands. Creepy. For many adults, the core appeal of Adventure Time is its nostalgia. Not like Instagram filters or cassette tapes post-irony nostalgia, but more like classical nostalgia, a pain or an ache for a time past that you can't recreate. While we usually think of its roots as in culture or the arts, nostalgia was actually born in 1688 as a medical diagnosis for Swiss soldiers wishing to return home. It's this wily emotion that's a mix of good and bad. At the same time that you're fondly remembering something, you're also confronted with the fact that it's gone or unattainable. From its origins, nostalgia weaseled its way into everything from art to politics to industrial design. You name it, someone thinks that the thing that came before it was better. Along the way, it transformed from medical nostalgia into poetic or romantic nostalgia, from a disease that could be cured with leeches to a feeling that could be evoked by a young kid in an animal hat. In Nostalgia of the Future, Svetlana Boyum writes, the object of romantic nostalgia must be beyond the present space of our experience. Somewhere in the twilight of the past, or on an island of utopia where time has happily stopped, as on an antique clock. I can definitely remember a twilight of the past with imaginary friends, tree houses, magical weapons, and if given the chance, I'd happily stop there. Adventure Time is perfectly romantically nostalgic for childhood. But so are a lot of other shows, like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, The Amazing Adventures of Gumball, and even Rugrats, sort of. What is it about Adventure Time that makes it so well-liked, especially by not kids? Here's where it gets a little complicated. It's because at the same time we, the audience, are experiencing nostalgia, so too are the characters in Adventure Time. It's nostalgia within nostalgia. It's a nostalgia-ception. Take a look at some of the clues. There was a mysterious, devastating mushroom war. A lot of the characters, especially Marceline and the Ice King, have this unexplained, evolving, wish it were still the good old days past. The landscape is littered with human remains and technology, and in certain episodes, you can even see a partially destroyed planet Earth in the sky. I mean, Finn is the last human, for glob's sake. That is, unless Susan Strong isn't a fish and you count the Ice King as, uh, uh, never mind. Adventure Time is a fun, adventurous kids show with a history, a potentially very dark history. Penward has even said his favorite emotion is feeling simultaneously happy and sad. So that's a reaction he tries to elicit in Adventure Time. This is called ambivalence, and it's what's at the root of nostalgia. It means you're holding on to two usually conflicting emotions at the same time. And Adventure Time does it on two levels. So that's four total emotions for the folks keeping track at home. You see it in the settings and the relationships, but also in the cute but disturbing creatures, the comedic but dire situations, the childlike but nonetheless high stakes situations. It's in the show, but it's also experienced by the audience. All these things contribute to capital D drama. Not like lowercase d drama, which is what LSP gets herself involved in. Yeah, guess what? Slime Princess is in the park, and she's like, talking to a new nice king. Uh, and he's like, totally single. Which by itself definitely doesn't make a good show, but combined with the creator's amazing imagination and character design makes maybe the best animated show ever. I'm biased, I really like Adventure Time. But seriously, I know more adults than kids who watch Adventure Time, including my mom, 
So that has to mean something. Yes, adults watch cartoons, but that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is that most of the cartoons adults watch are made for adults. The Simpsons, Bob's Burgers, Family Guy, South Park, even most anime. Adult situations, adult humor, and maybe with the exception of anime, very little emotional depth. But man, when Finn hugs the flame princess wrapped up in a tinfoil burrito? It's too much. It's just, it's just too much. Adventure Time is maybe the closest television comes to classic fairy tales, exhibiting a combo of terror and humor, excitement and fear that are the very hallmarks of childhood. Or maybe I just have a playground crush on Marceline.